today on Trucks. Stace and I begin the first of a three-week series that'll turn Chevy's Extreme S10 into a muscle-bound sport truck. Wheel to Wheel supplies the kit and will supply the shoehorn that'll stuff a donor LT1 under the hood. After that, we'll take you for a ride in the 99 Tahoe Z71 before putting brand new boards in a 48 Ford. That's all today on Trucks. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's show. You know, we just picked up this brand new Extreme S10 from Chevrolet and while it looks pretty awesome with its aero package and low profile rubber, it just didn't feel very extreme with a four cylinder under the hood. Of course, being hot rodders at heart, we couldn't help but wonder what it would be like with the blown big block and tubbed rear end and big pipes down the side. Whoa, and slow down big, big fella. Hey man, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, man. That all sounds great. And while we still want to go pretty extreme with this chariot, we want to be able to drive it on the street as well. So we decided a hot little small block Chevy is about the only motor that's going to fit in there without a shoehorn. And we got this LT1 out of a late model Camaro. The key to using the donor car is to make sure you get the whole system, the motor, the transmission, and all the computer hookups. That'll save you a lot of money in the long run. After making some calls, we found a company in Michigan called Wheel to Wheel that just happened to be in the process of designing a kit that's going to make our fantasy a reality. The first thing we need to do is get this hood off. Now once you have the hood off, it's time to start disassembly of the motor and the front clip. Now Wheel to Wheel says you don't have to take all this off, but Mel and I know from experience on a motor swap, it's a lot easier if you take the clip off. Also, you don't have to worry about scratching your paint. Here's another tip. When doing a major project like this, get yourself some plastic baggies and a Sharpie and label the nuts and bolts as they come off. Otherwise, they'll grow legs and disappear on you. Now, we've already removed the battery, drained the fluids, and pulled out the radiator. Now, you need to disconnect your electrical system. I like to take a piece of masking tape, wrap it around there, that way you can mark it and eliminate confusion when you hook it back up. While Stace was taking care of all that, I pulled the headlamps to get to the front nose piece that's held on by spring clips and just pulls right off. After that, you can pull the bumper, then the fenders, followed by the cowl support. Now, if you're working on a truck with air conditioning, make sure you take it somewhere and have the Freon recycled before you undo the fittings. It's dangerous to you and the environment. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and take off this computer. We'll replace it with the one for the V8 later on in the project. Now, since we are going to remove the inner fenders, we also need to take off the ABS sensor, fuse panel, and anything else that's connected before we can get them off. Well, it's about time to pull that weak pulse out of there and make room for that healthy heartbeat. But before we can hook up the hoist, I'm going to jack the front of this thing up a little bit so Mel can get dirty down below. Oh, thanks, pal. Anytime you're pulling a motor, you need to disconnect the drive shaft, shifter linkage, transmission mounts, and don't forget to unhook the exhaust system. Hey, Stace, you about got those jack stands under there, man? Yeah, you're ready to go. All righty. While Mel's goofing around underneath, I'm going to hook up the hoist. Now it's a whole lot easier if you can use existing lift points like this. All it takes is a couple of those to lift this out of here. All right, Stace, we're all free down here, man. Now before you can lift anything, you need to slide out the motor mount bolts. Now make one final check to make sure there's no cables, hoses, or electrical that you might have missed that could hang you up when you go to pull this thing out of here. A little bit more. There you go. We're just good. about ready to give our Extreme S10 its heart transplant, but first we need to take a break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Later in this show, we'll take a look at the 1999 Chevy Tahoe that's finally available with the Z71 off-road package. But now that we have that anemic four banger out of our extreme, we can drop in the donor LT1 that's packing more than 320 horse. Part two of Project LT Extreme is up next on Trucks.
thanks for hanging with us. We already pulled the four cylinder from our brand new Extreme S10 to make room for this LT1 V8. But before we put it in, there is some prep work that needs to be done. Now there's no way we're going to put an ugly motor in our brand new truck. Now if you spend a little time with some masking tape and a high temperature spray paint, you'll be proud to lift the hood. Once the detailing's done, it's time to bolt on wheel to wheels custom motor mounts. There's also special mounts that go on the frame, and the only modification you need to do is to tap out the factory holes with a 10 millimeter tap. After that's done, crank down the mounts to 30 foot pounds of torque, and this baby's ready to cradle that LT1. But before we can drop it in there, there's still a few things we need to do first. Now, since we want to burn rubber in all the gears, we're going to use a BM high performance torque converter. That'll spin that 700 R4 tranny. I've already put on the special transmission mounts that come with the kit, as well as these fittings for the transmission cooler. They also supply a template so you can shave just a little bit of metal there for header clearance. When you bolt the torque converter to the flywheel, it's easier if you have the spark plugs out. That way you can rotate the motor by hand to get the bolt started. Don't forget to use a little Loctite on them. Now it's time to slide this beast home. Remember, you need to have it at an angle so the tranny will clear the firewall. As you push it home, you'll also need to slowly lower it down. Make sure all your wires and hoses are out of the way so you don't pinch them as it drops down on the motor mounts. Next, slide a floor jack under the tail of the transmission to level it. This way you can slide the mount bolts in. That's going to do it, Stace. While I'm under here and the transmission's level, I'm going to put in the stock cross member. The kit's designed to bolt right to it. Oh man, Stace, that small block fits like a glove, doesn't it? Oh, this is great. Now, if you're aching to do a motor swap without the benefit of this kit, don't forget your six points that could cause you clearance problems. Both side rails, the lower cross member, the radiator, the firewall, and don't forget your hood clearance. Thanks to the fellows at Wheel to Wheel, we don't have to worry about that. They also sent us a set of custom headers that bolt right on. There you go, man. We like to use these copper seal gaskets from Mr. Gasket that'll stand up to extreme heat and eliminate any leaking. It's a great idea to use Teflon tape on the bolts, especially if you're going into aluminum heads because it'll prevent galling. Now the driver's side header is a little more tricky due to some clearance problems with the steering shaft. So we need to unbolt the shaft here, then slide it up just enough to give us the clearance we need to get the header on. Reconnect your steering shaft, bolt on your header, now your motor's ready to breathe. Since we added so much weight to the front end of our truck with the donor LT1, we need to run a stiffer spring. We're going to use these I-Box by Lakewood that have a heavier rate, which means a better grip through those S-turns. Now you can't upgrade your springs without taking a serious look at your shocks. Edelbrock has an answer for us with these Performer gas shocks. Now these babies have a patented valving system that controls body roll as well as wheel motion. This gives us a really smooth ride without sacrificing the performance we're after. While Stace was filling in on the new shocks, I went ahead and pulled the stock springs to make room for the upgrades. Make sure to use a floor jack when knocking the lower ball joint loose or you could end up eating a spring. <laughs> While Mel's looking for his teeth over there, I've gone ahead and hooked up the lower A-arm and the sway bar end link. Now we've got a home for our shocks. One of the most common mistakes with shocks is to tighten them down too tight. Just go until a bushing flares out even with the washer. Now that we have the suspension taken care of, it's just about time to start hooking this baby up. First thing you want to do when you have a lot of easy access is put in a new set of plugs. Remember, steel threads and aluminum heads always equal anises. This is also a good time to make sure all your plug wires go to the proper cylinders. That way, when you hit the key, fire. We're still a ways from turning this thing over though, so don't miss next week's show when we dig into the hookups and strap an exhaust system to our Project LT Extreme.
But don't go away. We've got more trucks to show you this week after the break. Later on, trucks will take you back in time by laying down a wood bed kit on a 48 Ford F1. But up first, it's good news for all you sportsmen out there. The 1999 Chevy Tahoe's finally available with the Z71 off-road package. Welcome back to the shop, everybody. As you probably know, the SUV is the hottest thing on the market now. Heck, even Mercedes-Benz and Cadillac have jumped in with all four wheels spinning. Now, Chevy's been getting dirty for years with the Blazer and four-wheel drive pickups, so it's only natural the 1999 Tahoe would move off the street and onto the trail with the Z71 off-road package. And while that's brand new for 99, the power plant didn't need any changes. A Vortec V8 that pumps out 250 horsepower is still the Tahoe's motivation. It also features an electronically controlled four-speed transmission, four-wheel anti-lock brakes, and shift on the fly four-wheel drive. road and climbing up trails is fine, but doing it in the leather interior is even better. Oh. Now one of my favorite features is the speed compensated volume control on the stereo. What this means is the harder you match the pedal, the louder the stereo gets, to make up for the background noise. <laughs> Speaking of makeup, our Tahoe is looking great on the outside with its brush guard, fog lamp, and monochromatic paint scheme that includes the front grille, bumper, and fender flares. The Z71 also has some cool looking Alcoa 16 inch wheels. There's no doubt the Tahoe still looks good, but it's the Z71 suspension package that's going to attract the outdoor enthusiast. It's got sway bars front and rear, Bilstein gas shocks, a dual exhaust system that leads back to the muffler, and for towing your toys, an auxiliary transmission cooler. So whether you're gonna haul the kids around town or go hunting down a new fishing hole, the 99Z71 Tahoe at a base sticker around 35 grand will definitely get you there. Don't go away, we've got more trucks to bring you right after the break. Up next on Trucks, Stacy's got the weekly quick tip to bring you, and then it's time to restore the wood bed on our 48 Ford F1. We'll take you step by step through the process you can do in your own driveway. Welcome back to the shop. Well, after playing around with all those brand new Chevys, we thought we'd take you back in time. The year was 1948 when the first Ford F-Series pickup rolled off the assembly line. And roll was about all it could do with a flathead V8 that produced a whopping 65 horsepower. But heck, in 1948, that was happening. And so was the interior. Not much plastic on this old F1. And check out the horn. <laughs> That'll get your attention. Man, as good as it looks 50 years later, this old truck still has one major problem, and that's the wood bed. As you can see, these old pine planks are split and warped, and whoever set this bed in before set it in too low. Then they came back here, and they cut out and tried to get clearance, thought that looked tacky, and tried to cover it up with this piece. The old truck deserves a lot better than that. We decided to correct that wrong in our old classic with a new kit from Bruce Horky Wooden Parts out of Minnesota. They'll build a bed for any truck, whether it's stock or custom. This kit comes with eight planks of white oak, already pre-sanded and ready for any stain you want to put on them. It also comes with stainless steel strips and all the hardware you'll need to finish the job. Of course, before we can put the new bed in, we got to get the old one out of there. Now this is really easy. Just take the nuts off the carriage bolts and they'll pop right up. 
And the old planks, with a little persuasion, pop right out of there. I'll tell you what, Stace, for a 50-year-old truck, the frame and bedsides look pretty good, man. Yeah, I was expecting more rust than that. These old boards weren't properly treated before they were put in. That caused them to absorb water, and we're going to avoid that. Mel's going to show you how. First thing you want to do is take a Scotch-Brite pad and wipe down the face of the board to get rid of any dust, splinters, or fuzzies. That way the stain will go down as smooth as possible. Now it's important to remember, anytime you put something on wood, it's going to darken it, so test it first. You also want to make sure to apply stain to the top, bottom, as well as the sides to prevent warping and cracking. Like I said before, we need to raise the bed to get clearance on the sides here. First thing you need to do is measure your support and then cut a board about an inch thick that will lay down on top of there. Now you can see I've drilled a hole for clearance for my frame bolt. I've also marked my holes for the mounting bolts. Oh yeah, make sure you use sealer on these boards too. Once you have at least three coats on your boards, they're ready to go in. This is the easiest part of the whole project thanks to the precision cut you get with Bruce Horky's kit. Once you have your boards in, slide in your strips, position everything how you want it, and all that's left is to bolt them down. Well, not only does this give our old 48 the perfect look, but it's also durable enough to handle heavy loads as well as nasty weather. And for about 500 bucks, it won't break the bank either. Let's see what Stace has for us in this week's quick tip. For fine detail work, I've found that using a large eraser, like the kind you threw around in elementary school, is great for cleaning and polishing chrome. The sharp edges of the eraser will get right into these tight little corners, which can be tough to get to if you're using a compound in your fingers. You can also take a standard pencil, chuck it up in your drill, and use this eraser for detail work. Now if you do this, make sure you watch the wear of the eraser so that metal head doesn't come in contact with your part. That'll kind of defeat the purpose. Stay with us. We've got truck gear right after this. And now truck gear. Parts, tools, and equipment for pickups and sport utilities. Welcome back everybody, it's time for this week's truck gear. Now whether you use your truck for work or play, the bed extender from Amp Research turns your short bed into a long bed just by dropping the tailgate. Flip it inward and you have a secure location for gas cans, tools, or even a few sacks of groceries. It's width adjustable and installs on just about any pickup in minutes. Get the most out of your truck with the bed extender for about $200. Now for those of you that need to replace sheet metal or body panels, this tool needs to be in your box. It's a combination air punch and flange tool from the Eastwood Company. One side of the head punches holes for spot welds or rivets. The other side makes a step flange for doing lap welds. It's also great for going around tight inside and outside corners. You can prep all your welding projects with this tool from Eastwood for about 90 bucks. That's going to do it for truck gear. Let's take a look at what Mel and I have for you next week. Stace and I continue a three-week series that will transform Chevy's Extreme S10 into a muscle-bound sport truck. The four bangers gone, a donor LT1 is taking its place. After that, we'll drop the hammer on the Searing Silverado that has the same heartbeat as a Corvette. Then it's back to the shop to show you how to turn your off-road vehicle into a submarine. That's all next week on Trucks. Well, that's going to do it for this week's show. Don't forget to join us next week right here at the shop. This is how a wood bed should look. Looks awesome, man. You know, I'm so glad we didn't stain it, too. Yeah, we've been it, too dark. Yeah, yeah well, it. Perfect. Well, yeah, but... Wait a minute. Those are cat pants. <laughs> oh, man, they are. <laughs> oh. I'm going to kill Skyrocket, man. She was supposed to stay home, and now she's out here walking over our planks. So what do we do to fix that? Kill the cat. <laughs> My wife won't like that, man. <laughs> she's still rolling.
Brooks is an RTM production.